guys welcome back to my channel and today we get to chat about ghost hunting equipment so so many people have been wanting this video for a while so finally I got through the move and I'm like you know what this is a really good time to do this because everything's organized I found stuff I didn't even know I still had including this little bad boy right here so this is my very first night vision camera for ghost hunting it's ancient I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know what year it was. Um, it's a tape. It's like, I don't even know how to use it anymore, guys. Well, anyway, the, the tape goes right here. So anyway, this is my first night vision camera. And I remember when they first brought night vision out, this is a Sony. Um, they actually ended up discontinuing them fairly quickly because they ended up being x-ray vision. You could see through clothes. Um, obviously I wasn't using for that purpose, but this is the coolest camera ever and I just have to keep it. It's not worth anything. It's old, but it has really good memories. It has all my original ghost hunting from back in the day. May you rest in peace, little Sony. It does still work, by the way, but I don't want to get the tapes and then have to transfer the data. Okay, so everybody's questions are, what kind of equipment do I use? How much does it cost? Um, and where should you start by investing? So the least expensive thing to invest in is a Ouija board right here. In fact, I think this was on sale at Walmart. I have a couple of them. I have um, a pink one and I have a glow in the dark one, but this is just a plain Ouija board. Um, it was brand new. I never ever would suggest purchasing a used Ouija board, but this is a brand new one in case you haven't seen it. Um, brand new Ouija board. Like I said, I just picked this up at Walmart. Um, this is, the new ones look like this, guys. I don't know. <clears throat> I only own three, but they're all brand new. So, I don't even think I've opened this one yet, to be honest. So this is what the actual board looks like. Um, the I have actually, my favorite Ouija board that I have is Glow in the Dark. Um, they're usually like 20 bucks for this. Um, so you start out, there's different ways you can start out. Um, they have instruction sheets. I would suggest opening um, the session, whoever you're doing it with. Um, it needs to be, you know, make sure that you're using using it for good, obviously. Make sure that you're doing it safely. Make sure you're doing it with people that you trust. And uh, like I said, I don't see Ouija boards any different than having um, a digital recorder. So this is the planchette. Like I said, this is a new one. I haven't even seen this yet. I, I always buy random shit and then like I never open it. And then like tonight, just I'll open it and I'll be like, what the hell did I buy? I'm going to read this to you guys. Here's This is the instructions, okay? Dim the lights and draw the shades to get better answers. Gently place the planchette in the middle of the Ouija board. Gather closely around the board if you dare. Place two fingers lightly on the planchette. Let the bravest among you ask the first question. Give Ouija enough time to respond because spirits can't be rushed. I swear that's what it says. Spirits can't be rushed. And don't forget to say goodbye when you're done. Ages eight and up. The second best investment is probably digital recorders. So these are the ones that I use. I have a bajillion, bajillion digital recorders. So this is an Olympus digital recorder and I don't even know what model it is to be honest. Okay, so the reason that I have these is that it has a USB plug right here. So anything that you get on he on these, you can transfer to your computer for files, and then you can put them in like for your audio for like YouTube. So that's why I have these in particular. So when I have regular investigators, I have them use these. 
My favorite though is this Olympus. Um, it's the DP-10 and this is for live um, EVP sessions or burst sessions. So you power it on, play it back automatically through this speaker right here. So that's why I like this one. This is the one I usually use when I'm doing um, EVP sessions. I have more complex, complicated ones. So this is a Sony and um, it's really schmancy and it actually has like a little microphone and everything. Uh, the, and I like this one, it's very clear when you get um, EVPs through it. The problem is when you're in the dark and you're fidgeting around, you can't have something that's super complex, like this one has a bunch of buttons, even on the side. So although I love this one, when you're looking to buy a digital recorder, make sure you're keeping it basic and make sure that you're able to transfer the audio files onto your desktop. And the reason for that is, is that you need to use some sort of a software through like Adobe Cloud and you need to clean up your, your audio so that you can hear things a little bit clearer by like taking out the white noise and stuff like that. So this is my little digital recording box for inventory. Another cheap tool to use is dowsing rods. I don't know if you guys know what dowsing rods are. Make sure that they are copper. Um, you don't want to get anything that is not copper or it's claimed that it won't work. Um, some people think that it's a mind over matter instead of a matter over mind thing. Um, so, you know, it's kind of up to you guys. So, like, I will ask questions like, you really have to find your center. And honestly, guys, I'm sitting right now, so this is not a good example to show you but I will say um, spirit guide can you please make the dowsing rods cross and let me know that you're here spirit gods please cross the dowsing rods so you can ask yes or no questions so um, say straight is yes and cross is no just kind of depends on you know what you get with the dowsing rods I find these fun to play with if I decide I want to interact with my spirit guide it's up to you, but this is they're usually like 12 to 20 bucks. They're pretty cheap. The next inexpensive item is a K2 meter. So K2 meter is like this. So there's a button on the top. You have to switch out the batteries in the back. You have to actually unscrew these. And then you push the button down to turn the K2 meter on. So K2 meters actually evaluate um, levels of EMF or milligoss. So that's usually, you know, they say that's what ghosts are made up of. of their energy is... Um, is EMF meters. Energy is milligoss. So if this goes up to red, that's claimed what spirit is made up of is the energy of milligoss or um, electromagnetic fields in the air. So I'm not a huge fan of the K2s. Um, I just feel like they are kind of boring, to be honest. Um, if I want an EMF meter, I don't really want to use a K2 meter for it. They are cheap. If you're starting out, it would be a good tool to start out with. Usually they're like 30 to 40 bucks. My next favorite is probably the SV7, which is the Spirit Box. Um, they have a new one out, it's the SV11. So you hold the power down and you can either forward it or reverse it. I usually hook up a speaker to the audio out, which is right here. It's super noisy. Um, this is probably my all-time favorite piece of equipment. I get the most evidence off of the spirit box. Once you start investigating, you'll realize everybody has certain things that they're better at. Um, Blake is excellent at catching stuff on video, as you guys have seen. My thing just happens to be the spirit box is my favorite thing. These will run, if you get the SB7s, they're like 60 to 80 bucks. And the new SB11s, I think, are around 120. I do need to update mine. Um, I need to update all my equipment. I just haven't done it out of sheer laziness. Um, but Spirit Box is one of my favorite things. You just need to make sure that you have like a hamburger speaker, which I didn't pull it out of our inventory, but it's a round speaker. And that's so that you can put your hand over it. Because honestly, when you've been investigating with the Spirit Box for like 20 minutes, that pure static white noise is gonna give you a headache eventually. So at least when you cover the speaker, you can ask questions and be clear about it, um, and then give spirits a chance to interact and answer. The next is the Ovulus. So I have the Ovulus 3. I don't have the new Ovulus 5 yet, which is fancy. Once again, I do need to update it. But with the Ovulus, um, all you do is turn it on. There are different modes. And you, Dictionary mode, it'll just start spurting off random um, 
property whole. So what this is doing is this is actually an EMF meter, which is what these lights are that are flashing. So what, an EM, what this type of EMF meter does is it takes the energy in the air. There are 2,000 words dictionary inside of this little computer chip. And then it takes the energy in the air and then it turns it into words inside of the ovulus and it pronounces it here, okay? Everything that's said on the ovulus, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's related to an, a spirit or an entity. Now, there are no names inside of the ovulus dictionary. There's a white noise mode. So it just kind of depends on which mode you're using. But every word that comes out of here doesn't necessarily mean it's related to a spirit. Now, if you get a name like Tom or Joseph, something like that, that has happened where it's come up on the screen. Those names are not in the dictionary for, especially the Ovulus 3. I haven't looked at the new dictionaries for the other Ovuluses that um, Bill Chapel has come out with, but if you get a name, more than likely you are interacting with some sort of a spirit. Ovulus is cool. I'm not good with the Ovulus. I don't know why, um, but Blake is actually really good with the Ovulus. Once again, it's just one of those things you have to figure out if you're good at using it or not. Ovulus is going to set you back. This is about four or five hundred dollars, or at least it was when I got it. Um, I'm sure that now the Ovulus 3 is cheaper and the Ovulus 5 is probably more expensive. I believe the Ovulus 5 is a touch screen now, um, so I would like to get the new Ovulus, but they all pretty much do the same exact thing. This is when gear starts getting pricey. My next favorite is the Mel meter. I always get awesome um, evidence on the Mel meter. So Mel meter, and the screen is loose. That's my own fault, my crew's fault. So it measures thermo, which is how hot it is or cold it is if the temperature rises while you're in the room, EMF, and then it also has the antenna touch mode. So the first thing you do when you turn this on is you pull the antenna all the way up. And then on the back, you're gonna push these two buttons in. So I actually have the more expensive Mel meter. And that's because I have the antenna mode on this. So if energy comes in this range of the antenna, it will notify me with that noise, okay? And then you hold the power button down until it turns on. So that is what it looks like when it's on. So the top one is milligauss MG. Once again, it's the EMF meters, which is electromagnetic fields, which is what's said that ghosts are made up of. And then right down here is the temperature. So obviously it's hot in here right now because I have the AC off so that I can record this for you guys. Otherwise my audio is gonna suck. Um, and then this is just what you do. You can take it around, get a baseline reading of everything. Take in mind that if you're using a Mel meter and you use any sort of you know energy around this, like antenna, like a cell phone or anything, it's gonna make it go off. So if you're doing any sort of measurements, make sure that you're staying away from anything that's electrical or if you run into like an electric cord in the wall, make sure that you're writing that down. Never ever put these like on the floor, exactly like literally on the floor because there could be wiring in the floor or even the ceiling. I've seen people do that and they're like, oh my God, the EMFs and the Melgaus are just off the hook. And I'm like, yeah, because it's on the freaking floor. So don't do that. But if you're walking around and you get some sort of a random reading, like a point one, who knows what that was. Um, but you know, that's not super high anyways, but it should be at a zero. But if you get something high, that probably means something's in here. So the way I investigate with a millimeter is, you know, I'll go around, do a baseline reading, but if I'm using it to actually investigate, you know, I will say any energies or entities that are in the room, please come up to the millimeter, which is the red screen. And then I will even show them how to do it. If you come up and touch the antenna, it will do this and it will let me know that you're here. If anyone's in here, can you please come up to the millimeter? That is the millimeter. It's actually one of my favorite things to use, to be honest. Um, if you really pay attention to your readings and even the antenna function, you'll be able to know if something's around you. So the milligauss will go up, it's a digital. And then down here, usually your temperature will more than likely drop. Sometimes it'll go up, but more than likely it'll drop. Um, make sure you get the antenna function. You don't wanna get it without the antenna function just because this is the real millimeter. 
um, made by Gary Gawka, and these will set you back between $200 to $250 a piece. The next thing is, I have a bunch of handy cams, but these are my favorite. So how to use a handy cam. The very first thing you want to do is make sure that you address, adjust the hand strap, okay? Because if you drop this sucker, there goes three or four hundred dollars depending on what you bought. So make sure that hand strap is in there because you don't want to get scared and like jolt and then you like fling the camera off. So make sure that that sucker is in there, okay? You're going to open this up. You need to make sure that you have an SD card inside. And this SD card is like, in, well, there's no SD card inside right now, but the loader is right here. You need to make sure it's blank because you never know what's going to happen. Um, because there is no card, I can't really show you guys anything on the inside, but this is what the little LCD screen looks like. And um, once you get it going, the lens currently is closed right now, but that's how you'll shoot. And there's different functions on the settings, and that's how you get to the setting of night shot or night vision. So this is one of my favorite cameras, but to be honest, all it says on the side is infrared night vision. So these are my favorite for my crew, or if you're doing a solo, um, this is this is my favorite solo cam for sure. Now when you're doing solo footage, let's say that you're in a haunted location, you just need to spin this guy around, and then if you flip the LCD screen towards you, you can watch yourself as you're recording so that if something happens while you're doing a selfie shot, you can see it. So that is the handy cams I use. And I've, I've had Sony, I've had, I, I do have a very expensive documentary cam. I will link you guys um, the Amazon link. When it first came out, um, that's the one I'm shooting on right now. It was like $6,000, it's pretty expensive. It's a documentary cam, so it makes everything look like real in vision. Very expensive. These little handy cams will set you back anywhere between three and four hundred dollars. Oh, it's a Bell and Howell, guys. There we go. They are about three fifty. They are about three fifty each. So ghost hunting is not a um, cheap hobby, that's for sure. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with a bunch of fancy stuff like the X cam and all that stuff. The next thing, though, um, you have to make sure that you have illuminators. So when you're using a handy cam. So with the handy cam, you want to make sure that that palm is comfortable. So this is a bracket for the illuminator, and you can actually, it's not necessarily just for the illuminator, the IR light, it's also for like if you're doing some sort of like videography and you need a regular white light or whatever. So on this little armband, it has the screw that goes in the bottom for if you had a tripod on the bottom of the camera. So you screw this into the bottom of the camera. And once again, make sure it's secure. And all this stuff, you have to make sure all your stuff is charged before you're investigating. So it depends on how you use these. You can use it, whatever is comfortable, whatever looks the best. You can move this arm to the other side. If that's more comfortable, make sure it's not um, you know, ruining the display shot. Make sure everything is tightened and gripped because you don't want anything to fall and break. And that is your camera rig for your night vision. Make sure you turn on your illuminator, your IR light, or you can't see much, and that is your rig. I have seen people that add illuminators. The problem is you don't want to make it too bright or it's going to wash everything out in your LCD screen and you may not be able to see that apparition. So make sure everything's charged because they can drain your batteries. The last thing that I want to share with you guys is DVR system. I have used a bunch and finally I feel like I have found the best DVR system not only for the visual effect of it but also because it's easy to transfer the footage onto your desktop. So I ordered the Night Owl and it's a four, it's, it has, it came with four DVR cameras although they make one that you can hook up like eight or twelve. So in the back of this particular one you can only hook up four cams but this is the Night Owl set that I have. So in case you need the model number to, to wonder which one it is, it is model WM-DVR8-500 gigs. So this actually has a 500 gigabyte um, in it. And you can actually end up putting eight cameras in total. You just have to buy the extra uh, placement. We have an extra DVR though and that's because I don't want to overwhelm um, the 500 gigabyte hard drive that's in this with a bunch of stuff to have to transfer and it gets overloaded. So we like to use two separate hard drives. 
Um, it's a little bit more complex to actually hook all of this stuff up. So like if you have a monitor, we actually use a television that's um, bigger than this is a 32 inch, but we use one that's bigger when we're investigating. Um, you have to make sure that you get the outlet for a computer monitor for the TV. We like to use TV screens because they're bigger and clearer and whoever's at home base can see more. And then you have to have all the cable footage to hook all this stuff up. Um, you just want to make sure that it is recording, obviously, before um, you know you guys start investigating. This particular DVR actually also comes with a remote, so you can actually see when you're recording. So this particular DVR set came with cameras that are night vision, and you can actually see the illum These are all the IR lights. So this is the exact same thing. These are the IR lights, but this is inside of the camera. These are great, great cameras. Um, they're tiny, but they are very, very powerful. So this is what we use. We use these four, but we also have four other ones that we use. I think I ordered these giant guys on um, GhostStop.com. They're pretty expensive. Um, they, I think that at one point they were like 150 a piece, and we have four of them. These are super crisp. Down here are a bunch of illuminators inside of it. In fact, sometimes this camera has too much illumination and it causes that white out, washed out look. So we have to be careful that when we're placing these cameras that it's in somewhere that's really, really dark. Because if it's the darker it is, the more crisp it'll look because of the illuminators. If it's not as dark, like let's say there's some um, night street you know, lights coming in, that's gonna make it really hard with the illuminators and it's not gonna be very clear when you have it on the DVR screen. <clears throat> so we have four of these guys. These were pretty expensive. I think the entire Night Owl um, set, so it's four cameras plus a 500 gigabyte hard drive that's already installed in the DVR. I believe that set was like 450 to $550 for that set. And then these guys were um, $150 each and we have four of them. And then we have another Night Owl DVR uh, with a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and I believe that was about 150, uh, 175. So this stuff starts adding up, guys. It's not an inexpensive thing to do. Now, last, of course, what you're going to need is somewhere to place these Night Owl, um, these cameras. So I'm just going to show you. So this is the cord that you will use the extensions for the back of the DVR but we use tripods for each of these. So this is a tripod, it's not open all the way. If you've never used a tripod, they're pretty idiot proof and that's how you open them up. Um, but this particular tripod is super cool because the plate on these pops right off. So here's the plate of the top of the tripod and this is where you connect it to the base of the camera. So you just pop it right in and you make sure it's tight. Please make sure that it's secure because if it's not, you'll drop these cameras and they're so expensive. You don't want them to break at all. But once you have the tripod and you pop this lock right back in place, you lock it down and then you secure it. And then you can start placing your night vision cameras wherever you want them. So it's super, super easy. Um, these tripods, honestly, I got on Amazon and the biggest thing is you don't, these are Ravelli, R-A-V-E-L-L-I. You don't want anything that's like thin or that's gonna break or fall over. I've actually had Energies knock these suckers over and they're pretty hardcore, like these are metal. They're not gonna go very far and they're, they're thicker. Just don't get something flimsy because you don't wanna spend a lot of money on all this equipment. And even if an investigator, I've had investigators bump into things it's gonna happen and they're gonna fall over. Just make sure that it's secure enough. You don't want things to break and have to replace them. That's the biggest thing. Now, as far as inventory as well, <clears throat> Blake is usually in charge of inventory. Um, so he does a um, check in and a check out. So as you're unpacking everything, he has an inventory list that he has to check in and make sure it's all there. And then as he's packing up, he has to check all the inventory back out um, to make sure that we haven't left anything behind down to cords. It can be a very time consuming process, but if you're out of state or if it's a really far away location, you don't ever wanna leave anything behind, especially a camera or a camera set that, that costs that much. Things do happen though, unfortunately. Just make sure that if you are investing in this, that you're being responsible, 
because this stuff's expensive. So hopefully that answers all of your questions. Um, that's just my favorite basic equipment. Um, it's the best stuff to get you guys started and trust me, I have tried a lot of equipment. Biggest thing is with DVRs, they can be kind of complex to work. Make sure you get something that's very simple to make sure that it's recording. Um, you don't want to lose any of that footage and you also need to make sure that it's easy to transfer onto your desktop. The last thing is using um, any sort of software for editing, whether it's audio or video. I use the full Adobe Premiere Cloud Suite and it's like 20 bucks a month. Um, to rent the entire cloud so you get access to everything including like Photoshop. I use Adobe Premiere for my editing software. Um, I love, like for my intros and outros that you guys see, I use After Effects. So I love After Effects and um, I trained myself on everything. Everybody out there, it is easy to use YouTube and learn everything yourself. Don't put a window block up. <clears throat> don't say that you don't know how to edit. You just don't know how to edit yet, so you have to train yourself. I spent many, many hours training myself on video editing, and um, I'm definitely not the best audio editor, uh, so I would never claim that as my forte, but <clears throat> I think my favorite is After Effects, and I only use that for the intros and outros just because you can get really creative in After Effects, and uh, Hopefully this answers everybody's questions. Let me know below if you have any other questions or comments, any ideas for uh, future discussions. Please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you guys follow me on social media because I'm there constantly and I will catch you guys next time.